Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about the difference between high mileage vehicles and low mileage vehicles and why the mileage doesn't matter, but what does matter is how the owner took care of the vehicle. For starters, this is a 2006 Lexus GX470 and this is a 2006 Lexus GX470. They both have the exact same options, the exact same specifications, but yet this one costs twice as much as this one did. This one has now almost 190,000 miles on it, and this one only has 113,000 miles on it. Which one do you think has more problems? Right off the bat, if you know anything about the GX470, you know a couple of the major problems that these have. One of which is that these have rear air suspension, and the air suspension likes to fail on them. This particular vehicle, all of it was replaced at the dealership by the previous owner last year. Where this one has not been repaired yet, and you can see the gap here, it's totally sagged out versus this. There's a lot more space because the rear air suspension has completely failed in this one. Another problem that these have is the dashboard cracks on them. A lot of these Lexus cars have this, and they had a recall for a while, and the previous owner did not get the recall done. And so you can see there is some dash cracking on this one, where on this vehicle, the dashboard was replaced, and it looks beautiful. Another important thing is how did the owner treat the vehicle and this vehicle i cleaned it up a bit but when i first got it, it was all muddy in here is all nasty underneath they obviously lived on a dirt road because it was just caked on dirt versus this vehicle was only driven on the highway and the street and it was way cleaner underneath the leather seats in here are in far better condition because the owner just took better care of the vehicle. There's no rips, there's no cracks. It is a little stretched from wear, but it also has 190,000 miles of somebody sitting in the seat. Compared to over here, it's only 113,000. There's a lot more wear on the passenger side, and the leather's actually coming off over there and exposing the backing. This vehicle also appears to be garage kept because this uh, black trim here is still in great condition where this one over here is all faded and chalky looking. And even the headlights are in better condition on this one compared to this one. The factory wheels on these GXs are also known to corrode. Uh, this vehicle had the uh, chrome rims on it and they didn't really corrode, but they just kind of discolored. Where this one had the silver rims. And as you can see, there is the paint is coming off of the metal because this vehicle is probably in a harsher environment, probably taken more out to the snow where they use salt on the roads and just generally not treated as well as the higher mileage, higher mileage vehicle. Another benefit of having a higher mileage vehicle is that usually things will have already been replaced. Like this one had upgrade brakes on it in the front because as it wears out, you need to get brakes. But this vehicle, I believe still has the original brakes in the rear and they are gone. I have to get them replaced very soon because they're squeaking. Now, some might say, well, but it's got higher mileage, so the engine must be more worn out. Well, it's not. Here's a back-to-back -back clip of both of them starting up. So as you can see, both of these vehicles perform exactly the same. I've just taken the engine cover off of this one, but it's the same thing. Another common problem with these is that the gas uh, cap seal likes to go bad and it will eventually throw a check engine light. This one was replaced just a couple months before I bought the car, where this one over here looks to be still like it's original. See how the plastic's a lot more faded? This will fail eventually, but because the other car is just on a longer timeline, it's had more use it was replaced sooner. Another thing to look out for is how does the paint work? How does the body work on it? And this one, as you can see, the paint is beautiful, but it wasn't quite like that when I got it. When I first got it, I had to do some paint correction and a ceramic coating on it to make it look this good, but it still wasn't as bad as this one is. This paint, I mean, this is just horrible. And the other side, and there's all kinds of, you know, 
this bumper has been repainted kind of this whole car looks like it's been repainted not the best the paint looks kind of thick it's kind of splotchy it's cracked terrible touch up and even over here on this mirror they have some more terrible touch up on it and so you think you know this is a low mileage car it should be better but it just isn't there's still a good car they're both amazing vehicles but one's just in a little better shape than the other one is now i'm not saying that you shouldn't go out and buy a low mileage vehicle and only buy a high mileage vehicle i mean i i did buy both of these cars but they both have different purposes this one i i like the color a lot better and it was just in great cosmetic shape so this is kind of my like the one i'm proud of and this would make an amazing you know off-road expedition vehicle and both of these cars still have a lot of life left and they both drive just about the same one thing i do notice though is that these both have the original shock absorbers and these ones definitely have a bit more life left in them than these ones do but i ordered the lift kit for this so i'm not worried about that but that is something to think about is that the suspension on your vehicle should be replaced about every 70 80 000 miles or so and this stuff wasn't because it's a lexus and it's very expensive because it has this little knob in here and you can control the um you can control the the stiffness of the shocks if you want it really soft you can turn it and have it really firm and because of that it makes these shocks really expensive because they have a wire that plugs into them and that's a lot more complicated and i think these shock absorbers are like 500 600 bucks something like that versus my old forerunner was like 100 bucks each shock so at the end of the day, what should you do? Well, that's really up to you. I'm just trying to, you know, help you be an informed consumer. And at the end of the day, whatever you want to do is up to you. If you want a low mileage car with a great history, go for it. But I kind of have both ends of the spectrum. I have a high mileage car with a great history and I have a low mileage car with a okay history. But they're both great vehicles. And if you believe in the vehicle you're buying, the mileage shouldn't matter. I believe in these Lexus trucks. I think they're very well built. So I'm really not afraid of mileage. As long as I know how to maintain them and keep it, keep it up, it'll run forever. I'm really not afraid of it. I really wanted to make this video to document the difference between, you know, the same vehicle, very identical vehicles that have completely different mileages. There's so many people on YouTube that talk about just a high mileage car or just a low mileage car, but I have the exact same vehicle at completely different mileage intervals and different stages in their life. And I've had this for a long time now. I mean, back in the day, I had a 4Runner and my dad had one and mine was a lot higher mileage than his and yet mine was in better shape than his because mine was just better taken care of than his was so it really just everything boils down to how was the vehicle maintained and if it was maintained flawlessly and always taken to a reputable shop or the dealership and it wasn't driven hard it doesn't matter how many miles are on it it really doesn't